Hello. Hello, hello. Your Holiness. Sound okay. Your Holiness, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I'm Su- yes. Lovely. I am Susan Neiman. I'm a professor of philosophy and director of the Einstein Forum. And I am honored and excited to welcome you to visit us today. I wish I could be welcoming you to Albert Einstein's house, which we are the caretakers of. It is a beautiful, small, and very simple place. And I'm sure you would enjoy its spirit very much. Unfortunately, we are stuck in uh, cyberspace. And so rather than welcoming you to Einstein's house, I wanted to read you something that Einstein himself wrote. The individual feels the futility of human desires and aims and the sublimity and marvelous order which reveal themselves both in nature and in the world of thought. The religious feeling already appears at an early stage of development in many of the Psalms of David and many of the prophets in the Hebrew tradition, Buddhism contains a much stronger element of this. So this is um, Albert Einstein recognizing the connections between both science and religion and our different religions. The Einstein Forum was founded 27 years ago in order to recreate the kinds of intense but informal conversations that Albert Einstein held in that house, not only about science, but about philosophy and religion, uh, about politics and social justice. We try to continue that tradition and we have several members of our boards here with us today, uh, as well as several formal former members <clears throat> fellows, young fellows who are invited to live for a period in Einstein's house and do their research. One of them, Shyam Wubaluri from Mumbai, has very kindly worked to organize this meeting. And another, <clears throat> Amber Carpenter, who is a professor of Buddhist and Greek philosophy uh, at Yale and US College in Singapore is also with us and has done so much to organize this group today. So I am going to ask Amber to moderate the rest of our conversation and our questions. And thank you once again for offering to deliver a lecture on Buddhism, science, and compassion. Thank you. <clears throat> I remember very clearly your small country, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Estonia. Oh, oh. That day, I remember. Firstly, I think I was in Sweden. Sweden. Then short stop. Finland, then to Estonia. Beautiful, small country. Although these Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, three small republic, a Baltic state, uh, very beautiful. Uh, so because it's a small country, but atmosphere is very open. So therefore, the few years, the teaching, uh, mainly Russians in, uh, in Lithuania. Latvia. L- Latvia. Oh. So uh, now, uh, today, you see, uh, not physical touch, but 
you see the through television you see uh, we are seeing each other and here you see and and we can discuss so so now the subject the Oh, Einstein forum. Oh, now oh, here, Buddhism, science, and compassion. Now, compassion is all religion carry the message of compassion because uh, all religion. You see, emphasis, warm-heartedness, and then tolerance, oh, contentment, self-discipline. So all these practice is common practice for all uh, religious tradition. In spite of philosophical field differences, uh, most of the religion. Uh, believe creator, then very idea of creator is like our father is infinite love. So we all, uh, if you think seriously, the creator concept of creator, then we all human being. Our brothers, sisters, of children of God. Uh, so, all religion. You see, uh, those uh, atheistic religion. Uh, you see, the concept of God, of Creator. You see, autom automatically. You see, develop. Believe we all human being on this planet are brothers, sisters, uh, same creation of one God. And then, uh, non, I said the non theistic religion, uh, mainly from India. Uh, All religion, uh, I believe, creation of human being. So, human, how say the uh, most precious to human being is loving kindness. Uh, now, some scientists also say uh, we are social animals. So biologically, all social animal, social animal, have the sense of community. Uh, so th that means, you see, concern of your own uh, community, because your survival entirely depend on the community. Without a community, one single individual human being cannot survive. Not only a human being, but also, you see, animals or birds. You see, each individual's survival or happy life depends on the community. So, sense of concern of community is actually the best way to fulfill your own interest. So, therefore, the uh, non-theistic religion or theistic religion, all, you see, uh, main message is message of love. Now, uh, today, number of scientists you see, begin to feel the uh, also the inner peace. And previously, uh, scientists from West 
there's not much sort of idea about our inner peace. Now, more and more scientists now really uh, being more sort of interest, more concern about peace of mind. In order to develop peace of mind, they, they, firstly, we should know the destroyer of peace of mind is not an external enemy, but your own uh, internal sort of I said, uh, I think we can say internal sort of enemy which destroy peace of mind. That's our anger. Uh, you see, anger come, then uh, peace of mind automatically uh, disappear. So the antidote of the so anger is compassion, sense of concern of other. Uh, there, then automatically, they, what's the day? Uh, you, you, what's the day? You respect or develop sense of concern of all, uh, firstly, all humanity. Uh, so therefore, uh, then India's thousand-year-old tradition, ahimsa, non-violence, not only towards human being, but all other animals. The India's thousand-year-old tradition, don't harm them, ahimsa, non-violence. Uh, with sense of karuna, concern of their well-being. So, uh, now the scientists also now begin to realize the peace of mind is very important. And basically, we are social animal, as I mentioned earlier. You see, uh, in order to develop peaceful uh, community, a sense of concern of our community is the key factor. So now, uh, uh, science and compassion, Buddhism, I think science also, as I mentioned earlier, you see now uh, uh, realize peace of mind uh, and warm-heartedness is key factor, then uh, including Buddhism, all major religious tradition, you see, as I mentioned earlier, emphasis, importance of warm-heartedness or compassion. Then Buddhism, you see, in order to develop uh, peace of mind, in order to develop compassion, and not just faith, uh, you see, Buddha himself, you see, expressed to us, oh, my follower, uh, monks, uh, nuns, and uh, lay people uh, should not accept my teaching out of faith, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. So the follower of Buddha in India, over a thousand years, and also in Tibet later, since the 8th century. You see, we follow, you see, uh, very much emphasis, reasoning, uh, investigation. So therefore, the ancient Indian uh, uh, tradition, logic, pramana, logical approach, logical thinking. So that, uh, you see, raise a lot of questions, and then investigate, investigate through reasoning, not faith. So even, you see, Buddha's own word, uh, 
uh, which Buddha used to taught according different, uh, say the, uh, different group with different meditative position. So, you see, uh, we cannot say, oh, this Buddha say, oh, we must accept. No, we must investigate even Buddha's own word, as I mentioned earlier. So, the Indian tradition, Nalanda tradition, even Buddha's own word, when we investigate uh, some contradiction, we have right to reject Buddha's own word. So, like uh, Nagarjuna, uh, or Chinese, usually we say, Lonsu Pusa, or uh, this great tinker of Nalendra. You see, they make distinction. A certain Buddha's word we must accept because there is a reason. At a certain Buddha's word we cannot accept because, you see, it goes against the reason. So that's uh, the Buddhism, particularly Nalanda tradition, you see, always emphasis uh, investigation. Therefore, Nalanda tradition uh, very much sort of emphasis logical approach. So since 8th century, the Tibetan emperor, uh, although, you see, it influenced Buddhism in, T in Tibet, mainly through China, and since 7th century, some Buddha's, most important Buddha statue, you see, from China. So very, very close link. But then, the 8th century, the Tibetan emperor, Chisung Tezen, now he preferred to invite top scholar of Nalanda uh, institution, his name, Shandarakshita. He, great philosopher, great uh, logician. His own writing about logic, about philosophy, we still study. Uh, so he introduced in Tibet Buddhism according to Nalanda tradition. So we very much emphasize investigation and we study logic. So like uh, Indian great logician like Dignak uh, and Dharmakirti, you see, their text, we have not only translation, but also we study, we consider from childhood, like, like myself, six, seven year old, already started, you see, the logical approach, debate. So, so now, we Tibetan, uh, since uh, Shanda Rakshita, you see, introduced Buddhism, so according to Nalanda tradition, so we Tibet, uh, over a thousand years, you see, study logical approach. So now today, uh, uh, a number of scientists, they really, when we discuss about mind through logical approach and matter, uh, like quantum physics, you see, when we also they uh, talk, when we discuss about these things, then, you see, the number of scientists really now showing uh, the deep appreciation uh, like that. So my own sort of experience, now over a few decades, I uh, discuss with scientists in different fields. Uh, of course, the matters, quantum physics, these things, then also, you see, about mind, about emotion, how to tackle these things. So, the 
one, I think, uh, unique thing about Nalendra Buddha Dharma, uh, very much so to use logical approach like that. So then, all, as I mentioned earlier, ultimately, you see, religion, you see, in a way, we can say creation of human being. So the main message of all these religion is uh, compassion, karuna. Oh. Now today, on this planet, anger or jealousy, fear, I think really create a lot of problem. So external weapons, including nuclear weapon, or uh, destroyer of peace. But ultimately, human mind, too much anger, too much fear. Then, you see, utilize human intelligence maximum way uh, to develop destroyer of these weapons. So now, uh, today, I think world, everywhere, you see more and more people really showing uh, denuclearize. Oh, wonderful. And then ultimately, we should uh, think the demilitarized world. Actually, we all, as I mentioned earlier, uh, according to theistic religion, we all brothers and sisters. And non-theistic religion, we all is a part of our community. So the loving kindness uh, on the basis of oneness, uh, the feeling or belief, oneness of seven billion human beings. So uh, all religion uh, carrying message of uh, l compassion, loving kindness. And now more and more scientists also now begin to feel compassion. Uh, loving kindness is very important for our health, for happy family, for happy community. And then, of course, now today, everywhere, people, sh you see, showing world peace. And then we must think deeper, deeper level. Uh, ultimately, uh, without peace of mind, then world peace important, uh, impossible. So now, uh, inner peace, uh, uh, not, uh, not thinking anything. No, thinking a uh, realistic way, then you see, uh, uh, realize anger, fear must reduce, and we all are part of human society. We have to live together. Through that way, we can, uh, uh, firstly, inner peace, then through inner peace, then every human activities becoming more peaceful and you see constructive. So now questions. We can discuss. Thank you very much, Your Holiness, and thank you for your time and attention that you're bringing to this. Um, our first question uh, is from Susan Nyman, the director of the Einstein Forum and professor of philosophy. Your Holiness, I think and worry about truth and beauty. Beauty is something that seems crucial for healing our souls and creating the inner peace that you urge us to find. Yet some philosophers in my tradition 
have seen beauty to be in conflict with truths that are very often worse than ugly. Jean-Jacques Rousseau described the arts as weaving garlands of flowers around the chains that bind us. And Theodor Adorno wrote that writing a poetry after Auschwitz would be barbaric. My question is, in a world of great suffering, how can we rec reconcile truth and beauty? Uh, in the past, we human beings did not much pay attention about our internal peace. Uh, so, you see, uh, the, if we cons consider, I mean, if you pay more attention about compassion, then entire humanity on this planet, you see, we are same brothers, sisters, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that sort of way of thinking, you see, through education, uh, we, can, we can develop, we can promote that real source of inner peace. With inner peace, we can develop peaceful society, peaceful nation, ultimately peaceful world. And then, uh, uh, these days, I sort of expressing the hygiene of physical. Uh, everybody is to pay attention. Now, more important is uh, hygiene of emotion. Uh, so anger, fear, this emotion try to reduce uh, the as a, the counterforce of anger, uh, fear, is more compassionate mind. Automatically reduce fear, anger, like that. So therefore, uh, we need the uh, hygiene of emotion. There is a method. Uh, we can prove these people who practice these things and truly, you see, uh, have the ability when we face problem. Some Tibetan monk who spent in Chinese gulag many years, one my friend, so he 18 years in Chinese gulag, a lot of problem. Oh. But eventually he uh, had the opportunity to come to here. And then he, since I know him, uh, so I, we just was a casual talk. Then he told me during uh, 18 years in Chinese gulag, a uh, few cases, some danger. I thought danger of life, maybe. I ask, what kind of danger? His answer is danger to lose compassion towards Chinese. It's nice. So you see, people like, like him, you see, consider the practice of compassion is very important. So result, that person's mind, very peaceful. So, best way to hygiene of hygiene of emotion hmm, is to practice this good human, uh, good quality. As I mentioned earlier, scientists now say basically we are more compassionate. So now, uh, it is very important uh, to educate people, or children. Like children, at young age, they don't care what different races, 
what different nationality, what different religion. Uh, but so long, smiling uh, and play together, then you see, the strong feeling of truly brotherhood, sisterhood there. Then I think a mistake is when we join education, then too much emphasis, this my nation, their nation, my religion, their religion. Too much sort of emphasis, secondary level of differences. So in education, you, we should emphasize oneness of seven billion human beings, uh, irrespective of what, what nation, what religion, uh, let's say, uh, so emphasis oneness of human being. So therefore, uh, our education uh, should uh, include education about inner peace. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the hygiene of emotion. That's very important. So education, uh, according Indian tradition, is secular way, not touching with religion, just the academic subject. It's a how to build happy family, happy individual, uh, finally happy world through education uh, without connection with religion. And then any religious sort of uh, tradition which help to promote that, we can bring. Uh, but basically, secular education. Like that. So most of the uh, problem which we are facing is essentially, uh, except you see global warming, these are something different. Mm. We, uh, uh, not, not our own creation, but many problem, our own creation. So the, the, the basically, nobody want a problem, but due to uh, destructive emotion. So for that, uh, through education, we can reduce this destructive emotion, then through that way, automatically, the world peace come. I feel like that. So education, key factor. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Your Holiness. Hmm? Our next question comes from David Shulman, Professor of Sanskrit and Indian Studies at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Uh, he's an Israeli peace activist and chairman of the board of the Einstein Forum. Your Holiness, thank you for being with us today. My question is, Socrates, the Greek philosopher, said that no one does evil knowingly. Do you agree? Is there a human urge to self-destruction? Could you tell us about the Buddhist theory of evil? Oh, I agree. As I mentioned earlier, basic human nature is more compassionate because we are a social animal. And because as soon as we are born, we receive the maximum affection from our mother. Uh, then, as I already mentioned, basic human nature more compassionate as a social animal. Now modern or the uh, knowledge, peace of mind is very important. So therefore, we uh, now through education, uh, we emphasize more about warm-heartedness than that very 
as they close with basic, basic human nature. Oh. Then, uh, I'm a Buddhist monk uh, who study uh, many Buddhist texts. Uh, so, one sort of one idea, basic nature of human being or sentient being, ultimate nature uh, we call pure. So that we call Buddha nature. We all have Buddha nature. Tadagata garwa. Marbe. Or Tadagata garwa. So that is the basis of the, possible, the theory or belief we can uh, eventually, through training, to purify our own mind. And eventually, this very mind can be Buddha's mind. So we call Buddha nature. Uh, so Buddha himself, you see, uh, made very clear all the negative emotion are uh, superficial. The deeper level, basic nature of mind is pure. So therefore, all these superficial uh, destructive emotion can uh, reduce, then eventually can also remove. Okay. Chodi Marve. Oh. As I mentioned earlier, you see, uh, the negative action or sin, you see, ultimately depend on our own motivation. The external activities, out of compassion, you see, some kind of wrathful sort of uh, method, uh, no problem, because ultimate motivation is compassion. So I think you already sort of know, you see, in tantric sort of tradition, there are a lot of wrathful deities. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, we can say these wrathful deities are very sinful. <laughs> but you see, their main motivation is helping sentient being, and some, some sentient being, you see, you need a little bit, or say the wrathful sort of attitude, then can reduce. Uh, sometimes, you see, you util, utilize fear, fear in order to stop your negative actions, like that. So therefore, mm, the uh, sinful, ultimately, motivation, the negative emotion, then with negative emotion, and including teaching, teaching dharma, also you see negative. Uh, so actually, Everything depends on our own sincere, compassionate motivation. And then verbal action, physical action, not much important. So the sin, uh, any sort of negative motivation, anger, jealousy, uh, with that, even teaching, uh, is also the sinful. So, like me, on high throne, you see, with uh, so thinking my own name or thinking some money, uh, and then the teaching become sinful, like that. Uh, so everything depends on our own sort of motivation. Any action out of uh, compassion is positive. Any action out of uh, selfish anger, then including teaching dharma, actually 
a negative, sinful. Okay. Now next. Okay. Thank you, Your Holiness. I will be asking the next question. Um, science, uh, Buddhism seems very scientific, and you emphasized in your talk um, the use of logic and evidence in, in Buddhist thought. Um, Buddhist, Buddhist thought also seems very much like modern physics in the way that it describes the dependent arising of impersonal factors. Um, it looks very much like the scientific worldview that physics describes, especially quantum physics. But the physicists who study reality, uh, their study does not cultivate compassion and it does not diminish suffering. My question is, why does Buddhist study of reality, of ultimate reality as dependent arising, why does that generate compassion while modern physics doesn't? Can physics learn from Buddhism how to promote compassion through the study of reality? Or are these just two separate fields? Yes. Uh, in Buddhist tradition, although all major religion, you see, uh, the main message is message of love. Uh, and then Buddhism also, you see, uh, emphasizes importance of uh, the karuna, karuna, the compassion. Uh, then. You see, the, the opposite or counter force of uh, compassion is anger. Then the deeper level, counter measure, counter force of uh, anger is the, when we develop anger, the object appears something independent, absolute. So that creates a kasura, uh, anger. So now here, uh, Buddhist tradition, uh, you know, one, one way try to develop a karuna Compassion. In the meantime, uh, try to develop sort of certain philosophical views. Things are, uh, also things are just not exist as appears. Now, quantum physicists, they also, you see, uh, there is a big differences appearance and reality, uh, appearance objectively exists. Uh, reality, uh, if we go deeper level, or finally, mental projection. Now, this is quantum physicist. So, in any way, uh, there is big differences, appearance and reality. The most of destructive emotion based on appearances. Uh, so appearance or enemy, something absolute there. Or friend, absolute, something there. So now that uh, Buddhist philosophy, uh, nothing exists as appears. Uh, appearance, this is something kasa. Absolute. Ka. Absolute. Uh, something absolute. So, uh, which uh, easily develop grasping. Uh, in reality, nothing exists as appears. Uh, things appears independently exist. But if we investigate, uh, nothing independently exists. So, now here, the Buddhist terminology is interdependency. Uh, 
but did some bond. You see, everything uh, com or say the uh, interdependent. The, for example, now enemy is ultimately uh, your own mental creation. Today's enemy, uh, once your mental attitude change, and tomorrow become best friend, but the same person, isn't it? So therefore, uh, now today's your best friend and do do something uh, next next day become your enemy. <laughs> so this you see uh, mental projection uh, and the interdependency. So now uh, the philosophical view you see things does not exist uh, independently. Everything interdependent. Uh, that is the, uh, in Buddhism in general, and particularly like uh, Nagarjuna, as I mentioned earlier, the Chinese usually call Lonsu uh, Pusa. So he emphasizes, you see, everything interdependent, nothing uh, in, nothing should as it exist as appears. So everything uh, appearance, something uh, objectively independent exists. The reality, nothing independently exists. Everything interdependency. So that uh, understanding. Uh, uh, so, or so the direct opposite to grasping things independently exist or objectively exist. So now combination, understanding, uh, everything uh, exists due to many different factors. Uh, so enemy is in a way our own creation. Uh, because things are interdependent. Uh, and then another aspect, uh, practice or oh, familiarize the uh, compassion. So this uh, wisdom side, nothing independently exists. Uh, the, uh, so the method side, uh, emphasize all our, our brothers, sisters. So these two things uh, uh, is the is a very powerful sort of method is it, to reduce the negative emotion. And then uh, now modern scientists uh, also now modern scientists now begin to pay more attention about our uh, inner feeling, these things, at a deeper philosophical field. Uh, so now, uh, here, you see, uh, according to my own experience, a lot of research we, we, can, we can do. Uh, so since the, I say, uh, Nalinda tradition, the very much reasoning uh, and ultimately related with our inner uh, mind, inner feeling. So, a lot of things to discuss with modern scientists. So, now we are going to talk Yes, certainly, as I mentioned earlier, now some scientists already are mentioning we are social animal. Uh, any social animal, you see, the, the basic sort of factor which bring together, that is the compassion. So now, uh, time sort of changing. So we have uh, a lot of also the facility to discuss these things. In ancient time, in the past, also in the past, uh, 
more or less isolate. Now, today, you see uh, much more sort of kasoda, uh, opportunity to discuss. So within my life, my, my own lifetime, the uh, last uh, few decades, you see, I have sort of serious discussion with scientists. Uh, also, I learn from them. So now, uh, in our uh, monastic institution, mainly in South India, about uh, 10,000 monk students. Uh, so there, I already sort of uh, introduced the uh, Buddhist or say the monk student should study science. So one on our uh, college uh, among the big monastery already developed or city some small center for uh, science research. So uh, we further use it develop. So like that. As I mentioned earlier, you see two parts. One, uh, practice compassion, uh, warm-heartedness. One, the wisdom side, the enemy, or so-called enemy, or friend. You see, these uh, grasping uh, emotion uh, very much de depend on uh, another sort of part of mind which believe uh, independently exist. Now that. Uh, usually we call uh, anything, as I already mentioned, anything, you see, interdependent. So co combine wisdom side and method side, you see, to reduce our negative emotion. Okay. Thank but, you very much. Uh, oh. Okay. But, uh, you know, the method side, I think, common for all uh, religious people. And the wisdom side, there are differences. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Everyone. Okay. Um, our next question is from Shayam Wupaluri, who is the current Einstein Forum Fellow. Your Holiness uh, Tashi Dalek. In the context of scientific method, you often have said that one should not conflate not finding something and finding its non-existence. I wonder how this applies to karma. My question is, given your conversations with leading scientists, what are your latest views about the notion of karma and mental causality within the scientific context? Will we be able to explain it scientifically in the near future? So, oh, karma means... Oh. Hmm? Karma means action. Uh, so the action momentarily uh, change or gaba, gaba kasure. Cease. cease. Action momentarily uh, cease. Oh, but, but then uh, during uh, verbal action, physical action, or mental action, you see, you see, make some kind of imprint in our mind. So, you see, that carry uh, life after life. Uh, even, I think, eons, 
You see, these imprint in our mind, which imprint of karma, action. You see, some kind of imprint in our mind. So even eons, now these, you see, uh, remain there. So even, I think we can say, uh, reach Buddhahood, also, you see, through our positive action, uh, it's imprint in our mind. Uh, gradually, all negative or uh, emotion reduce, positive emotion increase through action. Action. So finally, uh, we become Buddha. All these are, you see, the basis of. Uh, of the concept of uh, karma, action, like that. Mm. You see, more discussion with scientists. Uh, I personally feel, you see, more sort of conviction about uh, Nalanda tradition, you see, uh, those master, they thoroughly investigate and then wrote text. So now, uh, today, when we discuss with the different scholars, or, or including scientists, you see, those the small, small matter like world, some ancient Indian masters say, world fled. <laughs> I already rejected. <laughs> and sun and the moon, more or less same level. Nonsense. <laughs> so among the Buddhist scholar, the, the Chantakriti uh, now mentioned uh, you see, he believed, you see, very subtle level of philosophical views. So he expressed uh, some of the Indian master. You see, they already rejected these sort of thing. Uh, so uh, he, he dismissed these Indian master, some of these Indian master, including uh, Bosubandh, uh, like that. So, uh, I'm a student of Chandakirti. Uh, so, I believe Chandakirti's word. So, he already rejected some of senior Indian uh, Buddhist master. So, in ancient time, uh, it happened. So, now, nowadays also, you see, we can reject some of the Indian masters or what's the view. No problem. So, uh, so important is more research. Uh, so the uh, scientist, genuine scientist, uh, you see, uh, also we we can we can discuss uh, thoroughly. So we can go continuously. Okay. Okay, then that was a moment, but there's a change in the land and this one. Oh, okay, now next. Okay, okay, okay. Now, next. Thank you, Your Holiness. We have two more questions. The next one is from Carrie Harrison, professor of English at Brooklyn College, novelist and playwright, and a member of the board of the Einstein Forum. Your Holiness, um, we here in uh, today's America are very painfully divided. We're in great need of compassion. My question is, can you advise us of a practical way to apply this healing spirit to a bitterly angry nation? 
어. As I mentioned earlier, uh, now these days, uh, I expressing <clears throat> in education field, uh, we should, uh, as the idea, how to develop peace of mind, uh, how to reduce anger, uh, jealousy, a sense of competition. Competition, uh, two kinds. A positive competition, you see, you, uh, you want to be top. And then to, to serve more other people, to show the enthusiasm to further sort of develop. That, since that kind of sort of uh, say the competition, sense of competition is positive. Then another sort of sense of competition, you, in order to you reach top, the create a problem to other. Now, that kind of sort of sense of competition is negative. So there are, uh, uh, ultimately, I always say, emphasis the importance of concept for oneness of seven billion human beings. Uh, we have to live together. So, uh, the, say, the sense of brotherhood, sisterhood, uh, is something very important. So, uh, so now, as I mentioned earlier, now scientists uh, also now have the sort of view: we are social animal. We all have the, I'll say the ultimately we have the sense of respect other. And then, uh, through uh, through research or through practical, more self-centered, narrow-minded people, much more worry, much more anxiety, and more anger, uh, more open mind. Even you see, uh, so-called your enemy, you see, be best teacher of you. The, the Shantadeva mentioned uh, your, your, your enemy is the best teacher. You can learn many deeper experiences such as uh, forgiveness, these things. And then also, you see, genuine loving kindness towards your enemy is genuine love. Uh, sort of uh, loving kindness towards your friend may be much mixed with attachment. So, therefore, uh, when you have some, uh, s- some feeling of sort of kindness and you should think your enemy, then you feel same sort of kindness feeling. That's genuine kindness. It's a kindness feeling towards your friend or maybe mixture with attachment. Attachment. <laughs> so therefore, <coughs> as I mentioned earlier, Shantadeva mentioned uh, uh, the enemy is your best teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our final question, Your Holiness, comes from Nari Shalak Payer, Professor of History at the Universe, uh, European University in St. Petersburg and a former Einstein Fellow. Your Holiness, thank you. Can it be right to put a child into the world, given the presence of so much suffering? On the one hand, given the environmental crisis and overpopulation, another human being might add to the general suffering. On the other hand, if the child grows up in imperfect conditions, inadequate parents, difficult surroundings, the child itself may suffer. 
what does Buddhism tell us if we want to exercise compassion? Thank you, Your Holiness. As I already mentioned, uh, loving kindness or compassion is a all major religious real message. Uh, that uh, very much related with basic human nature. More compassionate mind, the human, be human being, physically or since mentally very healthy, calm. So physically also you see get a benefit. Always you say, uh, including your heart beating very slow. There's too much anxiety. Too much anger. You see, physical also, physical level also, very harmful. So usually you see doctors say, need rest, rest. Rest means not only just a lay down, but mentally. Yeah. You may physically lay down, but mentally, a lot of sort of anxiety, a lot of anger, <laughs> not, not just to rest. So, Restful means mentally peace. So, uh, so now the uh, practice of the compassion, uh, forgiveness. These, you sh although these come from religious text, but we should consider these are academic subject, not religious subject. Uh, for example, uh, some you see Buddhist text, a lot of sort of explanation, these things for next life or eventually for Buddhahood. That's exclusively for Buddhist. But generally, it's a lot of reason. Uh, you see, these uh, you should consider as an academic subject. Now, I think these days I or uh, telling people the 8th century one Indian, great Indian uh, scholar as well as a practitioner uh, Karsa Shivala Ka. Shantadeva, Shantadeva. Uh, his uh, one writing uh, there, are, there are a few books but one writing the Karsa Shunju Ka. Buddhist uh, Avatara. About uh, 10 chapters. You see, uh, sixth chapter, very much emphasis the, uh, see the negative, uh, negative effect out of anger. The sixth chapter, very much mentioned that. Then, eighth chapter, the self-centered attitude, very harmful. So altruism is key factor for happiness. So these two chapter, uh, really, whether believer or non-believer, whether Buddhist or non-Buddhist, doesn't matter. But these are, you see, how to, uh, or see, how to think about self-centered attitude is the key factor to develop uh, inner disturbances. Then, you know, sixth chapter, uh, how, how bad anger. Uh, so these, uh, uh, these books, I mean, this book, since I received uh, the oral transmission, uh, you see this book, I really experience my lot of my thinking change. Uh, now these days also, uh, occasionally, when I have some uh, sort of leisure time, you see read this this book, and then combine with the Kosa the daughter Jandakirti sort of book. So these books, wonderful, you see, to transform 
my mind. So not thinking next life or heaven. Simply, you see, dear this life, my mind, how to develop peaceful mind. Like that. There is Nangshu in the Chamsi, in the Lakhdar Tang Dreve. So, firstly, you see, Kodo, Tim Dugu. Yes, now there's one problem, one source of problem, human population uh, increasing. Uh, so this, uh, I, we, should, we should look more realistic way. So, this planet, uh, also the food and these things, uh, there's a limitation. And then on top of that, the global warming, very serious. After a few decades, the, most of the river may dry. So, uh, we have to think more holistic way. So, including human population. Uh, so, with also a certain reason, uh, uh, and then uh, also the more, I think, the future generation. Too many people come or will face difficult. So out of sense of concern, uh, some uh, birth control, I think uh, very relevant, like that. So, no, so you see, uh, related with thinking wider or say the problem, like that. The best thing, more monk, more nun, that's the best way, both control. <laughs> Thank you. Finished. And it, it is my honor to thank you, Your Holiness, uh, in the name of the Einstein Forum. I would also like to give a, a special thanks to Amber Carpenter and Sham Upaluri, uh, for, a former and present Einstein Fellows, for organizing this talk. I would like to thank your tech team for making sure that this broadcast could literally span the globe. And also, I gather there are 13 translators who I cannot see, but have been simultaneously translating this talk into 13 languages. Uh, but most of all, I would like to thank your holiness for honoring us with this discussion at the Einstein Forum in Brandenburg, Germany. Perhaps fortune will permit us to welcome you sometime here in real life. Thank you. Uh, I really feel great honor. You say uh, some institution, you see, have a connection with Einstein. So I have deep admiration about Einstein. So I'm very happy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Again, uh, see you again sometime in the future. Okay. Uh, so my physical sort of visit to uh, Estonia, I don't know. Uh, 
too far. But through uh, use modern technology, then distance is not much matter. It's we can discuss. Okay. Ka. Germany shows the highest importance to combat oh. so Germany. In, in Germany. No. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness. Thank you. And especially, it's Germany, Deutschland. <laughs> Since my uh, childhood, uh, so we, we do not make distinction Austria and, and Germany. So, uh, since my childhood, I develop a very close one of say, the relation. Oh, one, two, Deutschland people. So, Ashnada, and then Hara, 70 years in Tibet. Hara, my first English teacher. Uh, so we always see, uh, also, also the, the teasing, teasing, or joking like that. So, uh, Mr. Hara is my first English teacher. His English broken, so naturally his student uh, also broken English. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. The Mr. Hara, you see, till his last day, uh, he always used to feel very, very warm feeling towards Tibetan. So wonderful. Thank you.